Hello and welcome to So You Think You Know JavaScript. My name is Nelson Lacay, and in this series, what we're going to do is we are going to take a look at some of the more tricky aspects of the JavaScript language that often trip people up, whether you just started learning this language six months ago or you've been working with it for a couple years. So I really want to take some of the more kind of interesting and I don't want to say bizarre, but I'll say unique things about JavaScript and kind of distill them down and explain them so that people no longer have to guess about the behavior of some of their code. These are things that you have to understand if you're going to truly be able to express yourself in JavaScript. And particularly, uh, you're going to have to understand these things in order to be able to read other people's JavaScript code. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to be covering. The course is broken into three different sections. And the first section is all about scopes and closures. This is something that people often get messed up, especially if they are relatively new to the language. The question you always want to be able to answer is, where does your data live? Uh, when is it in scope? When is it out of scope? When are scopes created? What are scopes? Those, All of those questions are answered in this section. And not only that, we also talk about things like hoisting and immediately executing function expressions. If you don't know what either of those things are, that's totally fine. And we finally wrap up the section with a discussion on ES 2015 scoping. And that is what that section is all about. The next section is all about the keyword this or the execution context of your function. If you don't know what that means, that's fine. We talk about it, we discuss it, we break it down so that you'll never have to wonder what this is is because that's often a, a very big source of confusion for a lot of people who are working with callback functions and higher order functions and all that fun stuff. And they have difficulty conceptualizing what the this keyword is going to refer to at any point in time. The goal of this section is to always be able to figure out what this is referring to and most importantly, how do we change this? How do we modify what the this of a function is? And finally, just like the last section, we wrap up with a discussion of a new bit of syntax in ES 2015 that allows us to much more easily conceptualize the concept of this. The final section is all about prototypes. So prototypes is a very... I don't want to say odd, I'll just be nice and say unique sort of aspect to JavaScript. And it's not something you see very often in, in any other language. And so it's as a result, it's a source of confusion. People have difficulty conceptualizing what a prototype is and the syntax does not help. So this entire section is all about demystifying prototypes. What are they? What What's an object prototype? What's a function prototype? How do we change prototypes? How do we make prototypes? How do we do inheritance? How do we, how do we write a classical object inheritance model within JavaScript. If you don't know what I mean by that, uh, it, that will definitely be explained. So this will really demystify the concept of a prototype so that there's no more sort of guesswork when you're working with them anymore. So I go really in depth into prototypes, go under the hood and talk about how they work. And finally, we wrap up that section with ES2015 class syntax, which the ES2015 class syntax is a very nice little syntactical sugar from the latest version of JavaScript that allows us to very easily construct object hierarchies. And we will also be discussing that. So that's the course. We'll be discussing these three major things, these three things that you need to understand in order to be effective with JavaScript in order to go from a beginner level understanding to a more intermediate advanced level of understanding. So you really need to internalize these concepts in order to be really successful with writing or reading JavaScript. And I did my best to show you guys how these things work so that you can take a look at the code, your any code really, and be able to determine, okay, where are the scopes? What is this pointing to at this given time? What is the prototype chain? All that fun stuff, super core, super fundamental. And it's stuff that's really often kind of glazed over in beginner level JavaScript training. There are people who have been programming for years successfully without having really gotten a good conceptualization of these topics. And I don't believe that's necessarily a good thing. I think these concepts are within reach of being understood and should be understood. So with that, I guess let's go ahead and get started. See you guys in the next video.